Jesus Christ, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when I was 12 years old, I drove my 16-year-old brother crazy. You know, at that age, his main goal in life was to impress girls. And my main goal in life was to follow him everywhere and irritate him. And he would tell me to go away, and I would just stick to it. Now, he never threw me in a well, but there was one time he did push me down a hill. When I was 17 years old, my nine-year-old brother drove me nuts. It happens, doesn't it, when we're kids, and the age differences and the different competition between kids, whether it's with boys or girls or a combination of both, so it's kind of easy for us to relate to the story of Joseph and his brothers. We understand that, although we're very thankful that it doesn't, at least I am in my family, it didn't escalate to the point that it did in Joseph's family regarding the the hatred towards Joseph. Joseph was 17 years old, a lot of pride and arrogance in, in Joseph, and that was what was kind of causing the problem. That's what happens a lot of times with kids, you know, and the problems because we all think, hey, I'm the center of the universe. Well, you know, that problem is not just with kids. It happens to us, and it's a problem we struggle with even as adults. Rather than God being at the center, we see ourselves as being the center of the universe. And when we have that kind of an attitude, it makes it very difficult for the Lord to work with us to do the kingdom work that He has called us to do. Last Sunday, we began our series, Covenant and Kingdom, and we heard about covenant relationship, the special relationship that we have with our God because He is our Father. And He gives us our identity by calling us to be His very own through our Lord Jesus Christ and the incredible blessings that He gives to us, all that He has, He gives to us. As He calls us to be in this very special relationship with Him. And to live in the forgiveness and the grace of Christ and to live in the oneness that we have because of Jesus Christ. And in response to who God is and who He has made us, our desire is to then live a life of obedience. And so that moves us into the the second main theme that weaves its way through Scripture, covenant, and now today, kingdom. And kingdom is about responsibility. That is, we are the children of God, the people of God, and live in the grace and the forgiveness of Christ and the oneness of Christ, that He calls us to responsibility in His kingdom. Kingdom is all about responsibility, what the Lord desires for us to do. But it for, it, because the Lord desires to extend His kingdom and to rule His kingdom, through his people. But in order for him to be able to do that, our hearts have to be in the right place. Our hearts have to have the right attitude, an attitude of of submission and an attitude of surrender. And a great example of that is the story of Joseph. So we we heard quite a bit of Joseph's story. I'm going to walk through some things and just point out a few verses. If you'd like to have your Bible available, I'm just going to highlight a couple of main verses as we go through chapters 37 um, and on. But it starts in chapter 37 of Genesis, the story of Joseph. Again, he was 17 years old, and he was the 11th of the 12 sons of Jacob, also known as Israel. But of the 11 sons, Jacob loved Joseph the best. And he displayed that, as we're told that he gave him a very richly ornamented robe, sometimes the the coat of many colors. And there's more than just the fact that he had this nice-looking robe. It's what that robe meant. This was not a robe that you wore when you were out working in the fields. 
This was a robe that the supervisor wore. And so what Jacob was saying by giving this robe to his son Joseph was he was elevating him from the 11th son to the firstborn and giving him the rights and the privileges of the firstborn. How do you think the other ten felt? Well, it tells us how they felt. They didn't like it at all. And they didn't like Joseph, and they didn't like his pride, and they didn't like his arrogance, and it even got worse when he had dreams, and he came and told them those dreams. And as they heard him say the dreams, they said, what are you saying, that, that we're going to be bowing down to you? You know, God had given Joseph the gift of, of revelation in these dreams. But Joseph was still, because of his pride and arrogance, not able to get interpretation and application correct at that point. So they were just angry with him. They hated him because of his dreams and because of the coat that he wore and all that it meant. Well, one day they were out in the field and Jacob sends Joseph to go check on his brothers. A supervisory role. And as they're there and they see Joseph coming, they start plotting, what are we going to do? And they wanted to kill him. But one of the brothers talks him out of that, and let's just rough him up and throw him down in the well. Well, eventually it leads to the fact that they sell him to some traders that are on their way to Egypt. And then they take that beautiful robe of his and they tear it up and they pour goat's blood on it and take it back to dad and convince Jacob that a wild animal ate Joseph. We jump ahead to chapter 39. Joseph is taken to Egypt and he is sold as a slave and he becomes a slave of Potiphar who is the captain of the guard for the Pharaoh. But listen what the text tells us, chapter 39, verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. And then if you jump down to verse 5, it says, From the time Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. Joseph is several generations removed from Abraham. He's in a completely foreign country, and yet he is still experiencing the blessings of the covenant, the special relationship, that covenant that is passed down from generation to generation no matter where you're at. And so Joseph, even though he's a slave, He's experiencing the blessings of God because of the relationship that he has with his heavenly Father as God is protecting him and providing for him and enabling him to prosper as a slave to be to come the top person in Potiphar's house. And not only is Joseph blessed, but so is Potiphar and his whole household because of the relationship that God has with Joseph. Well, we heard the story, what happened in regards to Potiphar's wife, what she wants Joseph to, to do with her, and Joseph refuses to do that. And it's not just a one time that she asked. The text tells us that day after day she was persistent to the point where Joseph finally ran away. And so then she lied to her husband and lied to him and, and accused Joseph of something that he did not do. And so Potiphar had Joseph thrown into prison. Now there's an indication here that Potiphar did not believe his wife. Because if he had believed his wife, that Joseph had done to her what she said, Joseph would have been put to death. Instead, he's put in prison. But here again, the protection of the Lord. Chapter 39 
verse 20, the second half of the verse where it starts the new paragraph. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. And Joseph excelled even in prison. The Lord was with him, this covenant relationship, providing for him and protecting him. And we may think, wait a minute, you know, okay, the Lord's pro- making him prosper, but he's a slave, and now he's in prison. And this whole time period covers of a period of 11 years. And yet the te- text tells us that the Lord enabled him to prosper. You know, often when we think of the Lord prospering and blessings, we think of material stuff. We think of life going well. It's not about that. This makes it very obvious. It's about that even in the circumstance and the situation that Joseph was in, a slave and now in prison, he was still experiencing the grace and the favor of God. He was able to excel in what he did as the Lord enabled doors and a pathway to open up for him. That's the prospering and the protection of the Lord. Because the Lord was using these things that were happening in Joseph's life in order to humble him, in order to move him from his pride in his arrogance, which saw him as the center of the universe. All life revolves around me. God using these things to move Joseph to realize that he needs to be on the edge. And God needs to be in the center. God is the only king. And he is to be the king of our lives. And God wanted to be the king of Joseph's life and wanted Joseph to recognize that. And so he used these things to move him along. So while Joseph is in prison, the cupbearer and the baker get thrown into prison. Must be that something happened that Pharaoh almost got poisoned. That the one who cooks his food and the one who's supposed to taste the food before it's brought to him are both thrown into prison. So the determination is trying to figure out, okay, who tried to poison the king? Which one of them? So they're put in prison until this can be determined. And while they're there... They both have dreams, and they're trying to figure out what do these dreams mean. And so they talk to Joseph about it. Chapter 40, verse 8. We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So Joseph has grown As he says, do not interpretations belong to God. Putting God in the center. But then Joseph says, tell me your dreams. Because Joseph hasn't left the center. He's grown. He's now willing to share the center with God. God and I will work this out. God and I will tell you. God enables Joseph to interpret the dreams. And so the baker finds out that he's going to be put to death and the cupbearer is going to be restored. And both of these things come true. Joseph asks the cupbearer to remember him, but he doesn't. He forgets. Two more years pass by. Joseph is now 30 years old. Thirteen years have gone by since his brothers sold him into slavery. And now Pharaoh has a dream. And Pharaoh is trying to figure out what these dreams mean that he has had. And the cupbearer remembers Joseph and tells Pharaoh about Joseph and his ability to interpret their dreams. And so Pharaoh has Joseph brought forward. And then we hear in chapter 41, verse 15, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. 
but God will give Pharaoh the answer he decides. It finally happens. Joseph finally surrenders. Joseph finally steps out of the center of his universe and goes to the edge. He finally completely submits to God. I cannot do it. But God can give you the answer. God gets all the credit. God gets all the glory. As Joseph has been moved to realize, God is the king. God always needs to be in the center. And Joseph is now on the edge. And because of that, God can now work through Joseph. God can now bring about great things through Joseph. And we hear what happens later in the story of how Pharaoh lifts Joseph up to the second highest position in the whole kingdom. And to, to provide for everybody during this time of great wealth and this time of, of famine. And so now the Lord brings about the reality of the dreams that Joseph had when he was 17 years old. But at that point in his life, he couldn't handle. He couldn't handle things because of his pride. God needed to use these events to humble him to step out of the center so that God would be in the center. Submission. Surrender. We see that in our Lord Jesus Christ who came into, his, into this world to be our Savior. Our Lord who humbled himself, who submitted himself, as he prayed to his Father, not my will, but your will be done. Who humbled himself all the way to the cross. Placing himself in the hands of his Father for us. So that because of his victory on the cross, because of his resurrection, that we may have a relationship with our Lord. That we may live in his forgiveness and live in his grace and have oneness with the Lord. But not only that oneness, but now the Lord desires for us to be servants in his kingdom. He desires for us to be his representatives. But in order for us to be those representatives, our hearts have to be in the right place. Just as Joseph's needed to be. Our hearts have to be in the right place because pride gets in the way. God, his intention was always right from the very beginning that he would rule through his people. When he created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the intention was that he would rule through his people. But Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they pushed God out of the center and in their pride they said, we'll make the decisions. We'll decide what's right and wrong. And as sin has been passed down from generation to generation, we do the same thing. Lord, I, I'll be in the center. I'll decide what's right and wrong. Oh, how we need Jesus and need his forgiveness and need his grace and need his strength to help us to move from the center out to the edge because we deal and struggle with this sinful pride every day. Anything that gets in the way, anything that gets in the way of our submitting to the Lord, our surrendering to the Lord, causes an obstacle to us being able to be a representative of the king as we live in the kingdom. Pride, already heard about it, gets in the way. The other thing that gets in the way, unforgiveness. We're going to jump ahead in the story to the end of the story, chapter 50 of Genesis, because we know what happens. All of the family of, of Jacob moves to Egypt. They're provided for. They're taken care of during the time of, of the famine. But then the day comes that Jacob dies. And when Jacob dies, the brothers think, uh-oh, we're in trouble. Dad's not here anymore to protect us. Is Joseph now going to take his revenge out on us because of what we did to him? So they come up with a plan. What are they going to do? And 
Chapter 50, verse 18 says, His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. That was their plan. We'll be his slaves. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended it for You intended it to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. As Joseph was brought to submission and brought to surrender, God the King in the center of his life, he was given authority and given power. And with that power, what he does with it, he forgives his brothers. I forgive you rather than being their judge. Unforgiveness can stand in the way. When we have bitterness and resentment towards someone, when we don't forgive them, when we hold it over them, we take the center and take God's place as the judge. God says that's not our place. Instead, he invites us to surrender kingship to him. And he gives us authority and power to forgive and to love just as Christ forgives and loves us and to represent him in the kingdom, to represent him as the kingdom grows forward, as lives are saved, just as lives were saved in Joseph's time and lives are saved today. Every morning when I wake up, That 12-year-old boy is there, the one who thinks, I am the center of the universe. And I fight with that. All of us do. By nature, because of our sinfulness, we have that pride within us that it's all about me. And so we need to hear God's word because God's word clearly says, I'm God, you're not. He's the king. I'm not. And it's when we understand that he's the king and what that means. It means we're not to be in the center. It means we're to be on the outside edge. He's to be in the center. Then each day of our life is a journey being reminded of that. And as we seek to grow in that, then God can use us. As he gives us authority and power to rule as he rules through us as we seek to represent him. Every day is a journey of us going to the edge, Christ going to the center. A journey that Joseph took, a journey that we pray that God would lead us to be able to say the same thing Joseph said, I can't do it but God can. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We worship the Lord with our tithes and our